All right, I'd like to bring to order the June 27th meeting of the Tiverton Town Council. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Madam Clerk. Councillor Cook. Here. Councillor Janik. Present. Councillor Edwards. Here. Councillor D. Medeiros. Here. Councillor Burke. Here. Councillor Vieira. Here. Councillor Perry is absent. Consent agenda. Approval of Town Council minutes, June 13th, 2022. Regular meeting, Councillor Perry abstain absent. June 13th, 2022. Executive session. Councillor Perry, abstain, absent. Acknowledge receipts of minutes from boards, commissions, and committees. Economic Development Commission, one. Zoning Board of Appeals, one. Recreation Commission, one. Open Space, two. Acknowledge receipts of reports, Treasurer Chevette, May 2022, Budget and Revenue Reports. Acknowledge receipt of correspondence, Coastal Resource Management Council public notice related to proposed changes to the federally approved Rhode Island Coastal Research Resource Management Program, CRMP. Resident letter regarding development of North End of Tivenin. Would any of the council like to pull anything off the consent agenda for review? Wow. I just, I just have a question because the um, minutes, I was late for that meeting, so can I, do I abstain for that? No. You were at the meeting, right? I was at it, but I was late. Right. Okay. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes, the consent agenda, I'm sorry. Move. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made in second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Public comments regarding a council agenda item or other town business, nothing. Oh, we're, gonna go, we're, we're gonna go right through this today. Uh, public hearings advertised, discussion and possible votes. Coastal Roaster, Lisa Machado, consideration of sound variants for singing out against hunger. 1791 Main Road on 8-28-2022. Rain date 9-11-2022 from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m and request approval of special event permit. Is Lisa here? Come on up. Are you represent? Yeah, Jane. Yeah, you might as well, you're next. You're next. So you're standing in for Lisa? I am, yes. So any changes from last year, same exact thing? The only thing is the rain date request, but otherwise it's exactly the same thing, so. Now, do we usually have police at your event? No. no. Okay. We have police at your event. Um, any questions from the council? I hope it doesn't rain like today. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Now, as far as I know, there's nothing outside Main Road from these dates, right? Because, okay. Because there was one year there was four events going on. It became quite a problem. Not not with your event. It's just the, all the events. Um, no further questions? I'd like to entertain a motion. Oh, I'm sorry, open the public hearing. Anyone in the public like to comment on this item? Anyone in the public? I'd like to close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Will we approve the sound variance request for Singing out against hunger at Coastal Roasters, 1791 Main Road on 8-28-2022 with a rain date of 9-11-2022 from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Request approval of a special event permit. And approve the special event permit. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Motion to made in second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Evelyn, Evelyn's non-quit driving, Jane Biddo. Consideration of sound variants for singing out against hunger, 2335 Main Road on 8-26-2022 from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. and request approval of special event permit. Hi, Jane. So nothing different. 
Um, we do get police at your events. Okay. Not all day, though, right? No, they come when they believe it's going to be peak. Yeah, it is mm -hmm. like 6 to 9 mm -hmm. or 5. Okay. And you'll be talking to the police Definitely chief? Definitely after town council. Okay. Uh, I'd like to open the public hearing. Any um, discussion from the audience? Another question. Wait a minute. Sure. Any discussion from the audience? All right, I'll close the public hearing. Councilman Ed Edwards. So why do we need police at Headlands but not a coast of Russell's? Because I can answer that if you like. Because Evelyn's is at night. It's oh, okay. people are crossing the street. It gets really it gets much busier at mm -hmm. Evelyn's than it does at Coastal Roasters. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had some problems with sound and the police are there and checking to make sure everything goes well. Okay. You wanna say anything else, Shane? I guess I just I answered know, that. I, I think that the police agree with that. The dusk yeah. thing is what concerns them the yeah. most. It's really hard to cross the street yeah. around that curve. The only reason I ask is Coast of Roasters is a very congested area. Mm -hmm. But I hadn't noticed that it's the difference in time. Mm -hmm. Of course, Evelyn's has got arguably a lot of room. Mm -hmm. yeah. Coastal Roasters only serves decaf that day. <laughs> that could be <laughs> 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 And it's <laughs> also. <laughs> 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 and there's also been discussion that there's a crosswalk there yes. and there's, yes. there's, there's different things there that are different than Evelyn's. But Evelyn's can get very hairy when you're trying to cross the street. So is there a rain date for Evelyn's? No, no we did no. not choose a rain date this year. Because it's very difficult to change the musicians. We're going to keep our fingers crossed for Yes, and we have beautiful. a tent. Yeah. And we're talking about putting an extending tent as well. And it's also heated too. If it yes, gets, thank you. you're welcome. <laughs> I'm like promoting this without really trying. All right. Um, okay. Any other discussion? Do I have a motion? Make a motion that we approve the sound variance request and special event permit for Evelyn's Nine Aquatic Drive-In um, Singing Out Against Hunger, 2335 Main Road on 82620. 22 from 12 noon to 9 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Appointments and resignations, discussion and possible vote. Dog and Park Advisory Committee. 11 member board, two year term, there's four more vacancies. Kenneth Kylile, 55 Margaret Street, request appointment term ending 328 2024. Is Kenneth here? I thought so. You want to join this group, huh? Sure. Why not? <laughs> They're pretty busy. <laughs> They're pretty busy down there. Um, why would you like to join? Uh, we just recently got a couple of puppies, and uh, we're going to need a place to roam around, so I figured if I could help out. Perfect. Anything I can do uh, to volunteer would be uh, helpful. Perfect. Any questions for Ken? Can I add something? Yes. Uh, he basically came over there with no agenda and nothing in return, and busted his ass out that place in Oh, holidays. we did work. Oh, all right. Oh, oh, all right. Oh, well, then you definitely yeah. can join. Yeah. Unsupervised also at times. So uh, I think he would be an asset to our group. Perfect. I didn't know that you were that involved. Any questions? No, just comments that we're just hearing such wonderful, wonderful things about the dog park, like from people not just in Tiverton, but outside of Tiverton who are traveling <laughs> to Tiverton just to check out the dog park. So... Kudos to you guys and women. There's a lot of women involved. I there are. <laughs> uh, um, How many people do we have on it now? Well, with Ken, and we have 10. So one more person. One more. Okay. It's 11 member board. Yeah, so one more person. Oh, no. no. It's four. No, it I'm four. So very eight. sorry. Eight. We need three Seven more. So eight. Eight. You make eight. Correct. So we have eight now, three to go. Three to go. Yeah. I think two of them haven't put their paperwork in. From yeah, the that's what David told me. All right. I'd like to entertain a motion. I move that we 
approve the application of Kenneth Carlisle for appointment to the Dog Park Committee with a term to expire 3-28-2024. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? I thought you went Okay. All those in favor? Welcome aboard. Thank you very, Thank very you much. So much. Thank you for volunteering. what I was thinking when I did this. <laughs> Councilor Burke, discussion and possible vote to set a public hearing date on the proposed charter amendments for Article 3 financial town referendum and to approve funds to advertise a public hearing. Councilor Burke. Thank you, Madam President. Um, you have in your packet and also the clerk put at your tabletop um, tonight. Uh, so you have in your packet a clean version of the proposal and a uh, blue lined or red lined version um, that the clerk provided tonight. And we had this before us last week, but we need to go back into the committee just to look at a couple things. Um, so I'll talk first about question three, um, which is the there are two questions before us to consider to put to a public hearing tonight. One, the first one, question three, is shall the charter be amended to permit the town council to adopt a unified budget? inclusive of municipal and educational budgets through an ordinance process similar to other Rhode Island municipalities. Unified budget ordinance process shall include a review by an elected budget committee and a public hearing and further provides that if there are any alternate elector budget proposals, the final budget will be approved by voters at a financial town referendum. If no certified elector alternative budget proposals are received, no FTR will be necessary. So some of the key things, and you'll see a lot of blue on this version because it was there were so many things that needed to be modified that um, the committee thought it would be best just to strike what was there and put in uh, insert replacement language. So you'll see Article 3, Section 301 is repealed, and um, the language that is in here uh, in, is inserted in its place with new Sections 302, 303, 304, 305, and 306. The Section 302 entitled Special Rent Referenda is recodified as Section 307 with some deletions. Um, and then there are modifications to Article 4, Town Council, Article 5, Town Administrator, 6, Financial Services, 7, Budget Committee, 8, Town Clerk, 9, School Department, and 12, Miscellaneous. And those changes are to um, ensure that the language in those uh, specific sections around the clerk, administrator, et cetera, um, mirror the language that is suggested in the larger um, amendments, proposed amendments. Um, so you will see on the second page, page two, of, and I'm working off the clean copy. If anybody wants to refer to the other copy, please let me know. Um, the definitions, we felt it important to really define a, a, a few terms. One, budget includes all appropriations for operations, capital, and debt services, and excludes all revenue sources or estimates thereof. So any budget that's on the ballot is just the appropriations. Um, day or days refers to calendar days unless it's otherwise specified, um, provided that if a day or deadline falls on a weekend or holiday, legal holiday, the date shall be extended to the next regular weekday unless specifically noted otherwise. Non-property tax revenue is defined as revenue received by the town from sources other than those generated from the real and tangible property tax levy and motor vehicle tax set as set by the state of Rhode Island. And finally, unified budget um, includes the appropriations of all municipal administrative services and debt service, the school committee budget requests, and the budget requests from the town clerk and treasurer. Um, any questions on definitions just because they flow from throughout the document so I think it's important we get that um, and I'm not going to walk through every piece but certainly if there are questions um, let me just talk about what it does and doesn't do first off it retains a financial town referendum that voters can vote on a budget what it doesn't do it doesn't require us to have a referendum if the only budget to consider is the one put forth by the town council. So that's an important piece. Um, I think Joan can talk. I think it costs us how much? Like 7,000. Per, per referendum. Yep. Um, 
and oftentimes it's very low turnout and oftentimes lately there's been one budget so we're spending seven thousand um, dollars for no real vote um, there's still an initial budget workshop we set that date as no later than january 15th uh, the town clerk and town treasurer submits their budget through the town administrator as does the school committee and then the town administrator prepares a unified budget proposal and submits it to the budget committee and we'll talk about the budget committee in the other question um, in terms of the makeup of that um, they submit it to us in, as well on or before march 26th um, town administrator also provides an estimate of the non property tax revenue to the budget committee and council the budget committee has until april 25th to submit to the council their recommendations on a unified budget for the council to then consider in early May to pass a preliminary unified budget ordinance and in that ordinance it could it would contain any resolutions that might be necessary um, or we could by ordinance put into place those resolutions that go th forth every year and not have to worry about them during the budget process um, and then the, so the town council adopts that the clerk sets forth a public hearing at least 14 days uh, publicizing at least 14 days prior still in a newspaper of general circulation um, prior to the public hearing I should say council shall hold that public hearing prior to the adoption of a unified budget ordinance um, time and place you know is set in that newspaper um, notification at the conclusion of the public hearing the council shall adopt a final unified budget ordinance um, and must adopt before June 30th so that's the process up to that point the, the meat and potatoes of it anyway um, or I guess the chickpeas and broccoli rob for the vegetarians um, the uh, then there's the op op opportunity for elector budget referendum proposals um, the clerk sets forth the, the components of that actually some of that we did articulate later on um, in here but the components of the uh, petition are set forth um, are provided by the clerk if they're altered at all it makes that petition invalid um, but the any elector can put forth a, a petition and they must gather uh, a minimum of 500 signatures so that's somewhat similar to what we require for special referendum special referendum at this point is actually five percent of the voters um, qualified electors uh, which roughly would be about 600 or so um, so it's a little less um, <clears throat> than what is expected for a special referendum and um, if the necessary numbers of signatures are um, received and the budget proposal meets all state and local laws or regulations related to property tax caps maintenance of efforts maintenances of effort expenditure limits debt service or other collective bargaining or employment contracts it goes to the board of canvassers they certify the proposals um, and then it's put on the ballot to uh, for a referendum to be held 35 to 45 days after that certification <coughs> and um, you'll see on um, on page 5 section 304 it talks about how the ballot question would be worded the council's unified um, ordinance would be first on the ballot question would be shall the or original unified budget ordinance as approved by the town council be adopted and then there would be separate questions for as many however many um, alternative budget proposals there might be uh, before the voters and it would be similarly worded one quick yep. question yep. so when the alternative budgets come in there won't be public hearings regarding the alternative correct budget. correct we did not put that in here anyway okay um, and the question receiving a majority of votes of those oh there's a typo in here michael e should read the like question that. receiving a majority of votes of those cast in the <laughs> ftr <coughs> shall be declared to have been adopted so if a thousand people vote one but and there's three budgets one has to get 501 votes if nobody gets 501 votes then the top two would go to a runoff that's what it's like now correct? right it's mm -hmm. correct correct we have never had to have a runoff but that's pretty similar to what it is now um, times are uh, polling times and the like are noted there 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, they're again held on a Saturday 
I think that's up further. Yeah, that's up at 304A. Um, and then it's sort of the, uh, the vote needs to be certified by the Board of Canvassers. And once it's certified, then it becomes the budget. Whatever comes out of that becomes the budget. If it happens to be an alternative budget, then the council has to get together and fix their budget, and the school committee has to fix their budget, depending on which one uh, may have been modified. Because a, a budget proposal does not have to modify both. It could modify one and not the other, or it could modify both. Um, that's the way it is now. That's the way it is now. So then in 307, <clears throat> you'll see um, we this is this used to be 302, um, and we took out any request for special render, referenda shall include a budget proposal and a resolution because that really related to the current um, process of the FTRs, and there were no <coughs> other changes in that section. And then um, under town administrator, uh, it, again, it just relates back to, um, so town administrator shall, number one, in accordance with the requirement of Article 3, Section 301B, 4 and 5, submit a proposed unified budget. So again, it just relates back to what their responsibilities are under the um, 302 section, 301 section, I'm sorry. Um, and it, it does the same for the budget committee, the clerk, the financial services treasurer, <coughs> And um, miscellaneous, you will see the 1217 specifies. So um, by by law, we have to provide um, health benefits to um, any employee, including an elected official who works at least full, uh, who's a full time. What is it? full time? So the clerk and the treasurer are full time, and and uh, so those we just clarified that in there. Um, Anything you think I missed? The uh, school department was changed too to reflect the new duties under this as well. Yes. So anything after the uh, 307 is really just forming the current charter language to the prop to make sure, sorry, anything after 307, deal with the town council, school department, budget committee, basically it's just you know, um, rewording their powers and duties to reflect the new procedure that we spelled out before. So there's no additional powers granted it's just specifying that they've got to do the powers that were required of them under 301 and 302 other questions How do you want did to you move? say this and I didn't um, so the budget committee is seven members we're did not on that yet we're not on that yet. Oh, that's oh. a separate question okay question four. okay sorry so do you want to deal with each question separately or do you want to I just we're going to advertise both, so. I, right. I do just have a question so back where you said um, the budget committee prepares their budget, they submit it to the council? Yes, and the council is the one who adopts the preliminary budget and then the final budget. So that's the difference? Yes. Okay. They can still hold the same process that they use now? Other questions? Yeah, any other questions? Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, I thought one of the purposes of having a referendum was also to uh, approve or reject resolutions that's no longer? So the resolutions will be in the um, ordinance as put forth by the um, council or the council may choose just to address resolutions through the ordinary ordinance process um, because many of those resolutions are ongoing resolutions that have to be approved every year. It is spending of money in a certain way with accounts. So the financial resolutions would be decided by the council in an ordinance? Yes. And what was your reasoning for that? Just curious. I'm not be opposed to Again, the because most of those are ongoing and they can be addressed through the regular ordinance process. Or so, through the budget ordinance. So now they're just ongoing instead of having to be approved, they expire within a year? You they're could ongoing. write an ordinance that way. The, the council could certainly write an ordinance to expire annually and have public well, hearings that, on that ordinance. That's really not okay. But anyway. So um, which ordinance is that? I, I, it, it's not okay. So what specifically? Because that's one of the reasons we, did, we do an FTR is because not only is there a budget and an alternate budget, there are resolutions that the people say whether they want to approve or reject them, and you're taking that away from them. No, 
we're providing it through a budget ordinance process and any ordinance that might be passed by the um, council there is a section I don't know it offhand in the charter that allows anybody to um, request that the that ordinance be put to vote so you're going to put it in an ordinance instead of it just being a resolution so they can prove or reject so you're making it very very difficult for people and I think this is really terrible that you're doing that. Uh, secondly, as far as the budget goes, would you have suggestions on that? Leave it the specific way it language. is. You, you, you well, have we need to leave it the way it is and let the people speak. The let the people say. You would have to but provide some specific away. language on how to well, do that. The only problem with res the way we do the resolutions is sometimes, by no fault of anyone, we forget to include some. And then what happens was, is it expires and it's a very important financial resolution and we have had problems in the past with this so that's one of the problems with the way we do it because um, there's certain resolutions that you have to admit Donna every year get passed so Donna, let me can I may yeah, not only that, but no one showed up to the FTR this yeah. year. May, may well, they they don't really have any say because if you wanted to do uh, an alternate budget, you're not anymore allowed to touch any of the money or to really move anything around. So it's made it very very difficult. So you've taken uh, that voice away from the people. And secondly, I think the budget, the way it's being done, should be like anything else. You have a reject or an approve on the budget. And I really think, I guess what I'm going to say to people is buyer beware. You need to really know what's going on here. Um, you're going to have very little say, and you need 500 signatures. I have to wonder what you're afraid of. I have to wonder what you're afraid to of to get 500 signatures, signatures. In 10 days, 500 signatures in 10 days. It's unreasonable. It's uncalled yes. for. And 50 signatures is enough. What As you know, budget? it's not crazy like people are all coming with an alternate budget now that you <coughs> took away the, the idea that they can even touch their own money well, we in their own general yeah, so fund. I just, we, we didn't take that away. You can't take any money out of the general fund. Correct. And that's, right. and that's, Only the, the right. council can. Right. Well, hold on. So, that was a court decision. So I just want to make very clear. Based upon a court ruling on the language. Which in the, was in error. They well, called it. Are you a yes. judge? I... Are it's you an a judge? Error. Are you a judge? I'm a person, okay. and okay. he's a right. person. Right. I don't agree with so, it. So, Donna, um, him. Councilwoman, Councilwoman <laughs> Cook. Um, we'll go with it because he said it. Councilwoman Cook, the, um, the idea that you cannot touch revenue is correct. That was based upon the current language in the current charter. Well, and I don't know what he was reading because it doesn't I, make I understand you disagree with that, that and I respect said. that. I Believe me, I've been on the losing side of court cases uh, myself. Um, <laughs> but, I, you know, we, the... the that was the ruling of the of the of the judge. It is now part of an interpretation of this charter, which stands. No one appealed that, um, so that's 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 what we're faced with. So, we that was one of the reasons which was driving this these changes because we have court rulings that have now really uh, defined what can and cannot be done under the current charter. So right now, you're right. It's very difficult other than expenditures. They cannot touch other than tax raised revenue. They can't touch any other revenue. And that's, I know you disagree right. with that and I get that. But that's just what the court ruled. You've really, so, tied, I, you've really tied the taxpayers' hands on being able to control their taxes. It's way out of hand. It's yeah, going when, when over 7.1% within a year's time it's gone up. They can't touch Donna, anything, Donna, they can't do anything. We're not gonna get on a soapbox about this because this is just, this is going out to a hearing and a vote. Mm -hmm. Correct. So that might be your opinion, but the voters are going to decide on whether or not they like this. So, but I do want to bring up something with the resolution, and Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, if there's only one budget, then there's no FTR. Correct. So now we've got resolutions that, that are just sitting there, not to be voted on. All right, Correct. Doing they, are, they are done through the council. Part of the budget. Right. They are done so, through the council. So that's, that's the problem with the resolutions right now because you're not going to have an FTR just for the resolutions. So, but an ordinance has public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and can be repealed. Yes. And quite yeah. frankly, we had 
a whole bunch of resolutions on this budget. And how many people came and voted? 30 something? This last FTR was 81 voters. So 81 people said yes to these resolutions. But that's because there was one budget. There was really no budget to vote on. And, and many of them were us and budget committee, was school all of us. committee. <laughs> right. And my family and the yeah. you know, family. If you looked at the votes, not everybody voted for every resolution, yay or nay. It was kind of, it was really hit or miss. I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> but when 80 people come to vote for resolutions, that's not the people speaking out either. That's just Correct. 80 chosen, 80 people who are paying attention, who are involved like we are and came to vote. Or happened to walk into right. town hall and saw the right. booths there. And I always like, vote because I'm worried that to be one vote. So I always say, I'm going just in case no one shows up. Um, well, the resolutions then, though, would become ordinances which have their own public hearing. Well, they, they, they either could be done through the annual budget process and be part of the unified budget ordinance, or the council could choose to create separate ordinances related to financial resolutions that they can put in that ordinance that it sunsets each year unless a, the council renews it. And that, if it's sunsetting, then I believe would have to go through the hearing process. Correct. Correct. Yes. Every year. Every year. Yes. Like we do now. Basically, yeah, we they do. They sunset Basically. every year. Yep. Yeah. But we're also just talking about setting a public hearing. So if <clears throat> masses of people come in and are opposed to this, we can also make changes. Yes, we can. But the ordinances relate to the trash that the pays you throw. It's always the same very specific ones. And when we forget to put one on, then we're and it's the percent kind of screwed right. <laughs> that for that whole the, year. The percentages that go into certain buckets. The different buckets yeah. and the industrial park. And, that, and it, I, it's not. Go ahead. I would just question how many voters, how many voters in town really think our way of doing business right now is a wise way of doing business when we, even before this, <clears throat> when it cost us so much money. Um, to get this done um, and even before this the, the judge's decision um, and especially with resolutions that go on 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 and on every year and they do the same thing um, and it costs us $7,000 a year I don't think that's a wise use of taxpayers money um, and we're not taking votes away because each and every one of us or anybody on the, who sits on a future council, if they want to run again, the voters have to re-elect them. If they want them on the council, if they like what they did with the budgets during their time on the council, then maybe that's one of the things that helped them get re-elected. If they don't like it, that might be one of the things that don't get them re-elected. That's how democracy works. <coughs> um, anybody else for this section? And this is going out to public hearing. That's what this is all about. So at, if the public oppose this and want to suggest, please come to the public hearing and we can change. Mike, you can let so go forward. The second one you will find on. Can I ask a question while you're looking? Yes, sure. uh, so this is a product of your meetings. Correct. Yes. And you've had meetings, well, about twice a month, six, uh, for six, like six good, months? Good question. Well, we actually started with meetings back in September of 21, and then there was a technicality, so we had to reform. Sure. Um, and we had meetings probably close to twice a month for the last six months, yeah. yes. And they were fully open to the public. Um, we actually had a few members come at some occasions, uh, the chair, Jerry Larkin, Chair of the school committee came at one. Um, I remember that, and there was plenty of opportunity for public input. I just wanted to have a history and a travel of this no, legislation. And I would imagine that the public, at any time, could have given their opinion, opposition, clarification, and this is where we are. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the second question to be considered. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's on page ten, the last page. Okay. It's fairly straightforward. Um, 
its budget would be ballot question number four if approved. Uh, well, if all of them were approved. Shall the current 11 member budget committee be reduced to seven members who will continue to serve staggered terms? Um, and this is largely based on the fact that um, we don't get candidates for elections for budget committee much anymore. And even when there's open spaces, we don't get people who want to be appointed. Um, you know, and, I, and I'll be very upfront, the, the committee persuaded me to keep it elected. I hmm. felt it should be appointed. But that's okay. That's okay. The committee, you know, wanted to recommend this, and that's what it is. Um, but we feel that seven is a more appropriate number. Um, it would be staggered. Um, and we did take out that they have a treasurer because that was in the um, that's in the current, and we just couldn't figure out why a budget committee needed to have a treasurer because um, they're not managing their own money, which is what a treasurer would do: manage money. No, I think it has to be reduced because we cannot get 11 people right. to do You're this. Right. And even when we're trying to appoint them, they're not coming forward. So, and they're not staying on for a whole term. <laughs> well, currently we have two open positions for the budget committee. And have had for a while. How many are up for election this year? Six, uh, Three? Five. Five, I want to say, because it's five one year and six oh, yeah. another. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. right. Plus, we have two openings, so it's really going to come out to seven people that can get elected. I think, I think two of those are expiring okay. this year. Okay. Because I, th I thought we had open positions this year that never got filled. Two. That is correct. We have two still that are not filled. Yeah, we, and I, we all tried to get people to join, and mm -hmm. we could not get them. It's a very tough job being on the budget committee. It's very controversial, and some years it can be. Well, Deb was on it. Jay was on it. Jay Don, Chan, Donna it, was on it. Donna was on it. It's um, it's, it's a tough thing. Well, it's a very and, condensed period of time where you have to put, well, a, put a lot of time and energy into a condensed time frame. And also their meetings can become very contentious and they have to say no to a lot of people who don't like it and it's, including us, um, so it's not the best committee. And yeah. I'm not selling this, am no, I? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but... I'm just going to raise my hand and I'm like, Well, you can, you can take papers yeah. out this week, Mark. You didn't run out the door. Before, well, before yeah. Wednesday... Yeah. Of, Four this year I was in until about 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> this year went very well, though. Yeah. This year went very well. The meeting, they did not have a lot of meetings. The chairman ran it very well. It, it, was, it, was, it, it, was. it was a good season. And just for myself, for both of these uh, recommendations, <coughs> I think we all know that oftentimes people point fingers at the council for budget decisions that are really made um, through the budget committee but by the people um, and you know we take those arrows and uh, but with this change if it go if it would go through you know we would be responsible and people can hold us responsible can hold us accountable for budget decisions that are made right now it's you can say it but we basically manage the budget as opposed to um, approve the budget some years well, some years our budget is approved. Right. It's, right. it's good. But right, but we still don't make right. that final but, decision. But other years we've we had to cut that. things that we did not feel we, we wanted to. And a lot of telephone calls to our houses asking us what we were thinking, but we did have, not have a choice. All right. Any other questions, concerns? I just have one other comment that. Go ahead. Um, you know, the, the committee that worked on this didn't do this out of whole cloth. They looked at other communities, yep. the time frames, the timelines that have taken place, um, and there was some discussion about whether or not, you know, like Portsmouth doesn't have a budget committee. To have an elected budget committee is a validator of what the administrator or the school puts sure. forward. It's pretty important for the people in, in Tiverton. So um, it, it's always been said that the current system was going to be tweaked since the day it was going to, you know, implemented and it never really was and we have found over the years that there are a number of deficiencies with the current system so I, I do think this is a pretty good attempt at trying to emulate what other communities do not many communities as a matter of fact I don't think any other community does what Tiverton does today no so no. We're, we're alone in how we operate 
This and is very similar to ports. It's, it's very, very similar, except yes. for the budget committee. Yes. And, okay. and the number of signatures. They have a higher they, threshold. They have 10% that they use for theirs, which yeah. is, we did, we 10% would have been over 600, <clears throat> and we decided 500 was a more fairer number. But. And, you and they use the same time frame to get well, those signatures. I wanted 10%. Well, I'll be honest, 50 signatures is not enough. Uh, it's 50 people in this town that says, yes, we like it. And then it goes on a ballot, and people are busy, and they don't have a chance to really examine budgets that are out there. And these these budgets get out on the ballot with only 50 signatures, and it's a little crazy, and get passed sometimes. So. And, and just so you know, that number's not set in stone. You, the, we you could have a public it. hearing, right. you could say. None, or, of this, or, or, none of this is set in stone right. right now. And even when it is set to go to, to the ballot, people can say no. And right. then back to the drawing board, right. apparently. But yeah. um, people can say no. This isn't the council saying this is what has to happen. Right. And thank you for the committee, because I know you work so hard, and um, we all appreciate it. Mike. Um, I also want to thank the committee, my, my voting members, Jay, um, Joan, myself, and Denise. the treasurer, Denise, um, and my uh, non-voting members, Mike staff. and Chris, <laughs> and support staff, um, and certainly Mike, and his, I don't know who else you had to help you at your just office, me. just you, put in a lot of time and effort into making this um, read well in, in helping us with uh, legalese, but also Denise did a really good job of helping us to get rid of some legalese. <laughs> <laughs> not just Denise, the treasurer. No, that Denise. Denise. Um, I wouldn't be able to. So I want to thank them, and um, if you would allow, Madam President, I would make a motion that we ask the clerk to set a public hearing date on the proposed charter amendments for Article 3. Financial Town Referendum, which are ballot questions three and four on this document, and to approve funds to advertise such public hearing. Do I have to? Do we have to set a date? We can let her set the yeah. date. Yeah. yeah. Do we have to announce what that date is, or you'll just That'd set it? Um, my thought. Excuse me. My thought is uh, to get it uh, into the newspaper on July seventh, so that you can have a public hearing on the twenty fifth. That would give you enough time. Yes, that would give us um, Assuming two weeks. Assuming there are no changes. Correct. If well, there, even if even if there were changes, even okay. if there were changes that night, okay. um, the certification by the board of canvases has to happen by August 9th because okay. we have to have it to the state on August 10th. Okay. Okay. Just just out of curiosity, would that be the same date as the other two questions? We've already had a public yeah, hearing okay. on the other yeah. two questions, and they've moved to the board of yeah. canvas. Okay. Okay, so I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. Motion to be made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? 5 1. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. DPW Director Rogers, discussion possible vote to revise wording and fee for recycling bins as listed on resolution for fines and fees. Hi, Rick. Hi, good Wait, evening. Is this really Rick? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> uh, thank you for entertaining these requests. Uh, as you probably noticed, uh, we did write down on this request that the wording in the recycle bins is outdated. We don't... Uh, even have some of that anymore. So I'd like it to say blue 22 gallon bins and to have it say fee reflects approximate cost for DPW to purchase and pick up bins versus the current uh, wording and also the cost that the town is charged to purchase the bins has gone from 372 to six dollars. So we request an increase in the uh, selling price to more or less reflect the cost to purchase and pick up the bins. Okay. Any questions? Mike? Just so, so you're saying the line where it says recycling, take out where it says blue and green bins and substitute the language at the bottom? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
any other questions? I'd like to entertain a motion to revise wording and fees for recycling bins as listed on resolution for fine, fines and fees and recommended by Director Rogers. So moved. Second. <coughs> Motion's been made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Next. BW Director Rogers, discussion possible vote to approve the following transfers. A thousand dollars from account 54 40-5101 DPW maintenance workers to account 5440-7611 gas oil fuel. $7,000 from account 5440-5104 overtime to account 5540-7611 gas oil and fuel. $500 from account 5540-5150 sick leave buyout to account 5530-5150 Landfill sick leave buyback. That's it. Any questions from the council? Obviously, gas and fuel's going up, and we need to put that in those accounts. Yes. See this comment. Not to this amount. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve these budget transfers. So moved. Second. Motion is made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Oh, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the administrator kind of has a list. <laughs> uh, let me go through them. I can read them. You sure? I don't have to read them. And apparently the fire. <laughs> um, it's listed on the agenda. Yeah, it's listed on the agenda. So apparatus maintenance, fuel, oil, oil and tires, medical supplies, all things that we have to put into those funds. Got a ton of maintenance issues. On our apparatus? Yep. Which ones? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so uh, some of this was uh, PM maintenance that we've done on engine one, which is our oldest truck. Um, uh, engine three, the truck we're running now, uh, we had brake issues. How old is that one? I, I don't know. Engine threes, which was replaced when we got the ladder truck, we took engine two, pushed it up okay. to engine three. So it's our newest truck. That's uh, what I thought. Okay. Yes. Um, which is still, I, I don't know, I don't have the year on the top of it's, my head. No, it's okay. But uh, so broken leaf springs, broken shocks, and um, brake issues. Um, so we're in the negative right now. So this transfer would get us ahead, and we have a large bill to uh, Tim and Nord, body that's coming in. In a couple of weeks, so it's it's basically apparatus maintenance and then fuel and oil. Okay. Any questions? And then the uh, the last one, the medical supplies, is our our call volumes. I've gone up. It, it, it's really high, so we we were a little short in the medical supply. Anything to do with the brakes require a certified mechanic to work on those I vehicles that as well. Last time. Yep. And the medical supplies has, has a lot to do with COVID and yep. the amount of Yeah, the, the call volume, the runs are up. I mean, we're on schedule to go over 4,000 runs this year. Huh. So quite significant. And the fuel cost. Right, the fuel cost. Oh, it's obvious. <coughs> Any questions? I, I thought the uh, rescue funds were for exactly this, medical supplies and whatnot that has to go with COVID. What? Did it cost us more for the fire department? Wasn't that what it was for, recovery of monies used during COVID for rescue and? So, so uh, Donna, it's not all COVID runs that are right. increasing okay. our call volume. I just brought okay. that up because right. it, it's obviously. Some of it, well, our day-to-day -day call number is up, so it's our regular medical calls. COVID okay. has dipped kind I, it, of way it off. It had to be asked, though, because yeah, of no, the, yeah. yeah, I'm just trying to explain it to you. Yep. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Okay, I'd like to um, entertain a motion to approve the budget transfers as listed below with recommendation from the administrator. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussions? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Cook. Discussion, possible vote on independent traffic study on the impact of four major land developments on Maine, Suzerain, and Fish. Madam President. Yes. 
There's still a bunch of other transfers. I, I was out. just going to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We just did D. We did I, did I think you just did fire. All right. No, 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 we did it. Okay. All right. As listed in the All right. I, just, <laughs> I said as listed. Okay, that's fine with me. All right, but there were other. There were, there were than, others. This police. No that, okay. About the no, that's fine. And the fire chief wasn't going to answer anything about the police, police. holiday pay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Are you complaining of No, I, I, mean, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. All right, Councillor Cook. Um, go ahead, Donna. Am I on? Okay. You're on now. Okay. I apologize, Donna. I didn't mean to interrupt. She's ready to go. <laughs> All right. You're at the barrel. All right. So um, the subject of the request is a discussion and possible vote by the council on the following. Should the council and the town's interest approve an independent traffic study of the impact of the town due to four major land developments on Main Road, Sousa Road, Fish Road, and what is it, Schooner Road's kind of involved in that also. Um, yeah. Developers have their own independent study, but no global study has been done by the town regarding the cluster of developments in this one area regarding traffic, and it's all in North Tiverton. Has the town heard from Rhode Island DOT on this? That I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, impact, it finish and then no, no, yeah. impact on quality of life. Does it follow the comprehensive plan and ordinance article 20 development plan review, which I have attached here? And uh, we would need, an, need RFP to hire a traffic engineering firm. Use, I just was seeing where we could get the money. Uh, ARPA funds, TC contingency, um, wherever else we could get funds. But um, development review was interesting. It you're supposed to actually what is saying here um, protect the historic character of well that's this Tivit and Four Corners, but other areas of town were appropriate, and we do have a historic area. Uh, right there, um, I, I don't know the name of it. It, it, it. I don't know what the name of it is right yeah. right now. But uh, um, <coughs> you can't do anything with widening that road because it impacts the the historic stone walls and the properties that are historic. Um, so that's a problem. Usually, when you have when you go to the cities and you see all this development, they have very wide roads with. You know, three and four uh, lanes on each side. Um, it, that's not going to be possible. Um, so one of the other things is new commercial industrial development having architectural design and buildings um, compatible with the character of adjacent areas and complements the town landscape. Well, I don't know. That's questionable, but. Um, we're supposed to be mindful of what type of and how fast developments are in one area. Seems to be all at once. Uh, the cons comprehensive community plan. The comprehensive community plan is now defined as a set of materials, text, graphs, maps, studies, and resolutions that identify the goals, objectives, guidelines, policy, standards, devices, and instruments for the immediate and long range protection, enhancement, and growth in orderly development of the town. I have to question the orderly development of the town, my own personal opinion. Um, it, we're supposed to be the purveyors of watching for that sort of thing to go on and all of a sudden have this big problem. And you go, where did the problem come from? Well, it happens at such and such a time with s these people or no one was paying attention and look at the problem we have. So I'm just, I'm just trying to get ahead of, of a traffic problem. I don't know what the, what the rules are well, it was for the traffic. Well, it was my understanding that the planning board is going to do this, correct? So d globally, the planning board is doing this, but they're doing it very much how Donna is addressing it, that it's pretty much siloed. They are looking at individual projects that are coming before them. And when they require the applicant to go get information, let's say the gas station, they, they do a physical alteration permit with DOT. And again, it's looked at a silo. It's not looked at comprehensively as the whole project. 
Um, so I, I somewhat agree with Don. I did reach out to DOT at least a couple of times. Because it is a state highway then. It, all those roads are state, right. whether it's Main Road. Uh, the only one that's not a schooner, I, I apologize. But Main Road, but Sousa Road, Fish Road. And yeah, uh, which are, is a blind corner. It is. They're all, they're all state roads. Yeah. And yeah. we did reach out to them and explain to them that um, a couple of months ago, the director had reached out to us about which roads they were going to pave. One of them was Sousa Road. It was going to be done next year, and I pled with them not to because not as much as you know there are other roads that are worse. But my discussion with him was that there are a number of different things that are before the planning board, and I went through all those projects with them. I said, "Look, before we go ahead and you pave this road and it looks beautiful, and then you do all the construction to it, and you find out later it wasn't suitable for what's being put there, your team needs to look at this comprehensively." He agreed at the time that we talked. A few months ago, so I have then subsequently, we've you've been to planning board meetings, you've met, made mention of this, the TRC meetings, and I did reach out to their planning department again to try to get a team together to meet with steer engineering, the planning board, to go over these comprehensively to say what can be done, because I somewhat disagree that Sousa Road can be widened. It's not historic. There's no historic structures there on Sousa Road. It's you know, and it, it even if it's just a turning lane. But maybe they want to put a light in. I, I don't know what they want to do if they look at everything comprehensively, well, to, and that's the way it should be looked at. Instead of each individual project that's my that point. is yeah. is totally not looking at comprehensively. And, also, and I think the planning board would, would embrace that. So if we wind up utilizing some monies, whether it's the planning board's professional fees, or if we have to go to American Recovery monies, or some other method to you know, I, the last thing we want to do is stifle what the planning board's doing because they're doing pretty good work. With, you know, I, I don't mean. They do very good work. Don't, don't, I didn't want to, 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 to disparage them. Um, but it's hard when you look at individual projects outside of every other project. Right. So but but we have to full. okay money for something. That's why I brought it to right. So they do council. have some monies um, available that would be, could be utilized. And you know, I'll talk to the planning board about that and if, if it's not sufficient. But we, I also think that DOT should be part of this yes. funding piece as well because these are their roads and and they also have to look at the industrial on uh, the industrial part so that and the industrial other phases part. of the starwood project as well where we you know we've got what phases four five and six that have been completed and you've got the northboro thing you've got the, uh, other things that are being developed there uh, that are in the process or being completed so it, it does need to be looked at holistically and i do think the planning board would, would, would embrace that that it, they can't do it all by picking on one particular and i don't mean that they do that but let's say we take seasons gas station they can't say based on everything else around them that they now have to fund something that is attributed to everybody else as well right. so their hands are pretty much tied they're doing the best that they can but it's, it's very, very difficult to do this without getting DOT involved, and we're trying to get DOT involved. Definitely. So, and they are receptive to being involved. Okay. Deb. So, the last planning meeting, they did talk about a um, study that was done during COVID, um, December, and they pretty much indicated there's not a whole lot of traffic. Um, who did the study, the developer? It was the developer yeah, who, I was who there did it. That. And, um, you know, I, I know they have their uh, algorithms and their numbers and how they figure it out, but they're not driving on those roads. They're not seeing the traffic that, that we see. I mean, Just Jay, today I went by. Jay car talked car. about it. Um, the people who live there, the people who live in the villages, it's difficult getting out of there. It's difficult coming out of the boathouse at eight, nine o'clock at night, and that's when the traffic is the lowest. So um, I think that was a big question, and, and the planning board did kind of instruct them they need to kind of do that again. But that was just talking about one development. Correct. It that's wasn't talking problem. about all of them combined, and also the one on Stafford Road. I don't, is that, I can't remember the name of that oh, yeah. one. Um, the one that's French, down. Uh, Friendship friend, Friendly. Friendly or whatever, yeah. <laughs> Because they're only talking one, one entrance. Who picked that friendly name? I don't friendly? know. It's it's right units. It's, it's, well, that would it's impact this particular area, but no, but it's a different area. Well, but it's still, what is but the it's name still, of that? it's not friendly. Friendship. The one off Friendship. Stafford. Friendship. Oh, oh, Friendship. 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 Friend
Right, right, right. Yeah, yes, but it's I but it's that. another thing it's that will, friendship. That was will, friendship farm. I knew it wasn't right. friendly farms like Devin said. <laughs> 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 it was labeled at one point as friendly. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> You know, what I haven't seen is the, um, t to be able to um, count the cars and all the traffic, I haven't seen them put anything on the ground. Have they done it? Lately? I haven't seen that in a while either. I've never during, seen it. During COVID, I believe it was during done during COVID in the winter. It was there for like two days. When no one was out? When no one was out. <laughs> When it was snowing. During COVID, during <laughs> no, winter, no. when no one was out, we did this traffic. In oh, December. please. In December. Okay, so. In December. <laughs> all right, Mike. So, During I, I'm winter. not even going to say anything. So, um, knowing that there's not often not much we can do as a council, it's uh, it, you know, right. development projects are outside of our purview um, of, of oversight. Um, I think this idea of doing a traffic study is is a really good idea. A comprehensive traffic study of the four proposals, as long as it's done in concert with the the planning board. Um, because I do think that you know there are very valid concerns about the traffic flow and knowing that any in individual project traffic studies that have been done were done during COVID is laughable, um, if uh, if not ludicrous. In December. Um, in December, <laughs> um, you know, it was likely at a time when schools weren't in, buses weren't running, you know, a large majority, a lot of people were Correct. working remotely, etc. So um, if we are at all able to um, do a comprehensive traffic study for that area, um, I am all for it. And I would ask, I would suggest we uh, uh, authorize the town administrator to put forth an RFP for such purpose and work with the planning board and DOT to- and DOT though. Yeah, I Rhode think, Island DOT. I yeah. think they're responsible for some of this. I think they'll be receptive. To to and being part of the definitely bring it to the planning <coughs> board because they may have other recommendations. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I agree. So well, that's a form of the motion. I'll second that. Forthwith, because to be useful for what's going, you know, what's coming at us. So we can see if we can get on the planning board agenda the next yeah. agenda and just okay. say this is what the town is proposing. We just entered into a contract with uh, Steer Engineering. They hired a they hired a traffic engineer to look oh, at. Did. To look at the current study uh, for the, the applicant study for the that's seasons. Just one. That's, that's just, just one, right? But we just we just signed a contract today. But that so. season saying mm -hmm. we're here alone and, and knowing what's in back. Yeah, no, I mean, to, of the yeah, no. To be fair, at the TRC, they did indicate that they were aware of the other developments. They they do give a a plus factor because of the other developments, but they admitted that it's not, you know. No, because they don't really. It's know not their it's not their responsibility to do right. so. All right, so the motion is to. Thank you, Donna, for bringing yeah, this forward. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so I have a motion and a second. You got the motion, Joe? Okay. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Renee Jones, Economic Development Commission, discussion on the allocation of Discover Newport 7,000 grant received. Hi, Renee. Hi. I saw you blown in with the rain. No, I paddled down. Yeah. <laughs> I just have um, the information that I had about um, uh, who actually owns the gazebo, because we actually do, because that was, has always been something that keeps coming up. But according to um, Jim Donnelly in 2003, um, we um, did a, a finding that said we own the gazebo. So, I'm hoping that that puts this to rest. The town owns the gazebo once and for all. There's ones there. Because that has constantly come up back and forth, back and forth, but now we have something that says we did it. Is the gazebo historic? Yes, it is. <coughs> on Middle Avenue? On Middle Avenue, okay. Yes. So, okay, so, but we can use this money for all this. Let me, let me just, oh wait, I just had my little speech. I'll really be quick about this. No, so you are you giving me a hard time for Jen? <laughs> no, the reason I ask is. Listen to me first. If it needs a roof. Yeah. Does it, can we just put a roof on it? No. All right, say your speech, okay, Renee, because you wrote it. is because I'm just literally just coming for some guidance and some clarification. So, you know, I, I'm bringing this up because I just want to, yeah, there should be some more. Oh, my microphone, sorry. God, I thought my voice was loud enough. 
Um, anyway, so I'm coming to the um, town council to ask for some clarification and guidance. And I figured everybody's in the same room, attorneys, you know, whatever, so I do it all at the same time. Um, and what I wanted to do was bring up a question about um, repairing the Middle, Middle Avenue gazebo, which is town property. Um, and um, what we're looking at is to repair the roof tiles which, and the understructure of the Middle Avenue gazebo because it's never been repaired. That part has never been repaired. And also to add an electrical connection because I want to explain why. So um, for years, since 2003, don't look, I see you looking, huh? What? No, 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 no. I was looking at him because he giggled. Okay. Yeah. Just don't, don't make me any more nervous than I am. No, um, I, I have no opinion. Okay, but, you know, every year a group of us puts, puts up the tree, lights the tree, and literally to light the tree we have to do an extension cord that goes across the road to a very nice neighbor who allows us to do this every Christmas. And every Christmas we sing, you know, and that's a liability. And, um, and every Christmas, you know, people get around like, you know, from Dr. Seuss and sing from Whoville, all the Christmas carols. And it is really something that's really nice and brings the neighborhood together. Um, but it is also historic. Um, the, the, um, the brief history is that the gazebo structure was built around the late 1800s and actually covers a well that provided water to the homes in the area. So there is a well, and there are some people that re say they remember lifting buckets up. I mean, I wasn't there, obviously, but you know, that was something that was done. So there is a well under there, and that's why the gazebo was, gazebo was built over it. Um, so what I wanted to do tonight, and it's kind of, part of why I'm here is because I'm on the EDC, but I'm also one of the neighbors that has been working on the gazebo for the past 20 years. My husband and, and a whole group of us have done this. Um, and in fact, um, the building was going to be torn down in about 2004 because it had gotten into such disrepair that people wanted to tear it down and put up a prefab, you know, one of those things you see from Home Depot over the gazebo and uh, over the well, and we decided not to let that happen. So since then, the neighbors have gotten together and either scraped, repainted, repaired, you know, spent, a, you know, done their own time and their own money to do this. And so what I was wondering about is, is this time, because we did get the money from the Discover Newport, and that was the letter that I had sent along that was um, something that was to be used for tourism and you know um, things in the, in the town. And I thought, again, I'm going to bring up the gazebo. I had brought it up once before, and we never really you know, followed up on it. Part of that was, be I'm sorry, oh, part of that was just fine. Oh, okay. Um, so anyway, um, so my question is, OK, um, here's, um, I'd like to know if uh, funds are still available from Discover Newport. We had at one point when we first got this started just randomly picked a, you know, a builder to get a price for what it, what it would cost to repair it with what they call architectural correct tile, you know, roof tiles and do the under, under repair, which was never really done. I really don't want my husband climbing on the roof um, at this point, um, although that's what you know, they'd be willing to do. But at this point, I think since it is the towns, we should look at what we can do to repair it. It is a landmark. It is a historic landmark. Um, and I think it would qualify for um, the Discover Newport Fund. So basically, I'm here to find out, is this something that the EDC could sort of work with the town administrator and figure out a way to do this? Is this something that we could do with DPW? Because it would, DPW did help the last time with the roof. They actually helped us remove the roof um, and, and place it on somebody's property so we could repair some of the other things. So it's a small, it's a pro, small project. I think it's a, a, a good project. Um, I'm just looking for guidance in terms of how best to approach this. and. That's Is the here. EDC recommending this as a committee? I, I have, no, I have not. We haven't even been to the no, EDC No, no, no. I'm this. talking to you first because I'm not going to bring it to the EDC as a project if I don't even think that there's a chance, well, snowball's I mean, chance in hell. There, like there have been some general discussions by Christine about having this money available. Money used, right. And how to use it. So <laughs> right. Not specifically around a different, you know, what, what the, whatever the project might Pro be. Right. So, right. Um, I do think it behooves a more concrete discussion with the EDC about here's that would the money, be, here's what it can be used for, one idea is this. I People think the EDC ideas. needs to recommend to us what they think the money 
recently used. But I, I don't need, I, I need to know if the money's even there because I don't know if it's been. Yeah. It's, it's okay, I just didn't yeah. know. Yeah. I'm well, asking. It's been, it's been put in escrow since it came in. Yeah, okay. So it's 7,500 and it can be used for these projects. I mean, there are other projects in the town. I think Christine was looking at some, I mean, there are other things that could be done, but I just wanted to know if the gazebo could be one, and if, if there's more, maybe the EDC could look at other projects. One of the well, things we did talk about was um, um, doing another garden at the, um, where the, where the uh, people park and ride is, you know, something that says Tiverton or whatever. But I just need some background <coughs> and help. Mike, Mike has his hand up for us. Um, just again, this is for my lack of knowledge, so forgive me. Um, you had mentioned, Renee, that it's an historic landmark. How is that designated? Who designated an historic landmark? Oh, no, it's just that it's been there for. Okay. It's, so yeah. it's not, so it's not, it's not technically like, an historic it's landmark. It's not a historic landmark. Okay. okay. Um, and but it's from eight, the late 1800s. This is, I, guess it, I don't know if this question is answerable at this point, but. Uh, given Mr. Donnelly's um, letter, who would manage it for the town? Meaning, for example, um, the beaches are under the Recreation this Commission. You know, we'd have to look at the ongoing who would be yeah, assigned that, to that. That's part of um, the question. And this is Jim's opinion. It's, it's yeah. his opinion. It's his we opinion. need to get verification. Yeah. Again, it's like boat ramps and everything else. Yeah. 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 yeah, the documentation to it behind that opinion, yep. Um, and then the only other thing, again, I'm making my assumption that Jim is accurate. Um, I always ask that if we're using town property for one religious observance that we use it for other religious observances. Yeah, no problem. I have a hard time with using town property for such, but as long as it's spread around to various religions there's never been an issue in terms of anybody asking for it I'm sure that would be no problem um, it's just that that's how it's been done so Jay. <laughs> okay so about a year ago mm -hmm. the issue of the roof on the gazebo came up so I went and looked at it mm -hmm. and the reason I asked you is that a historic structure is because there is a huge difference in cost between what you do with a non-historic structure and what you do with historic. Right. So when I look at the roof of the gazebo, six sides, there's just regular shingles on it. Right. So it could be shingled. The bad part of it is there's a finial sticking up through the middle which is completely rotted away. That's got to be replaced. When do these funds have to be utilized? One year. One year. One year. Well, as we all in this room know, this is an awful time to be doing construction projects, but if we have to spend it and that's where we want to spend it, that's fine. We will probably use all or most of this for that gazebo. I, I would be more than happy to look for other estimates, and like I said, if there was a way to work with DPW, if we could get the right kind of shingles and they could help us with it, that would be fine. I'm not, I, I'm just, that was a ballpark figure um, and I'm just looking to get some guidance from the town council. So uh, the ballpark was 7,000? I'm sorry, it was 7,500. You can specials? ask, that's the no. money we, you, you can right. ask for an extension. That was given to us by Discover Newport. Right, and the, the estimate was? Seven. One estimate was $5,000, one. Okay, I would just personally like to go back, the money is there and it's available to you. Okay. Um, I would just like to get a recommendation from the sure. EDC. Okay. And maybe other members would like to recommend other projects to us. That's fine. Yeah, but, I, I, but, that's why I'm here. I'm just trying yeah, to get some well, guidance into Denise, how to handle this. And she has to ask for an extension. She no, can no, ask for an no. extension. No, it's it's going to be started yeah. by 2023. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's next year. Oh, All right. No I problem. I was wondering why you were wanting an extension. I'm like, but you okay. can ask right. for an extension, but it has to be started a year from now. Yeah, I, yeah, the grant was in February, the end of February. Yeah, okay. February 22nd, I think, is what the letter says. So we have at least till February. February. To, you know, to, I mean, certainly I can put this on the agenda for the um, EDC this next coming meeting. We can talk about it. Um, it is money that's available to the town. I'm just putting my bid in and looking for guidance on it. It says the, the town projects yeah, it utilizing these funds must be started by June 30th, 2023. So, so we have we have a full have year just yeah. to start. Right. Okay. 
All right. All right, Renee. So that's thank it. You. I will bring it. And thank you, because I know you applied for this grant and you worked on it, correct? I'm sorry. No, no, no. We did not. This oh, was. I said this was the one. This is no, this, this is this oh, is because right. of our sorry. membership. And um, oh, I yep. thought this was the other one. No, no. no the the other grant was the thirty thousand dollar grant that we that's got. Right. Um, right. Yeah, that was. Um, oh, I get it. No, okay. this is based on a certain percentage of. This every town from this like every that. town from this that was in the eight, you know, the towns in Newport County were given a, given that. a grant. And ours was this amount because they somehow had a the rubric that they for, used. Yeah. Um, okay, so I will put that on the agenda. And yes, um, we did get $30,000. <laughs> yeah, I thought, yeah, I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I, I, all right, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Cook, follow-up discussion regarding letters sent to the city by town of Hopkins related to solar energy proposed legislation HB 6676 related to taxation levy and assessment of local taxes, their opposition and include opposition to recent bills HB 8220 sub A and SB 3027 sub A. Go, Donna. Okay. <laughs> Uh, there's been uh, a few things going on. Um, I have a few things to say. Um, I did ask um, Jay to look into who voted for what, and uh, he's very good at, at doing that. So I just thought <coughs> since um, 8220A has passed and is being sent to the governor. And the Senate Compa Companion Bill died in committee. In May, which is interesting, the League of Cities and Towns voiced their opposition to this bill. Financial incentive to further decimate farmland and forested land and is contrary to the state saying to avoid solar installation in these areas. The property tax relief bill for solar developers is what this is. Taxpayer dollars are now going to subsidize these companies. If the taxpayer is now, this is just my opinion here. If the taxpayer is now a business partner, we should reap the rewards when the companies make a profit. After all, we are stakeholders and should benefit by getting a check to each city and town since we would be part owners. That's just my opinion. One of the things that's going on here is that what we were told and how this would work with solar development is being kind of changed up. Uh, in the pursuit of developers not having to pay their fair share in the towns and <coughs> encouraging more deforestation and farmland takeover. And um, I can't speak for everyone, but I just think it's terrible that's going on. I, I can't fathom for the life of me why legislators would go up there and let the treasuries and the budgets of the towns they represent be plundered like that. And I'm getting tired of it. And it's happening more and more often. They are supposed to be representing us and a firewall to not let this happen. Because as it shifts from a company, it shifts to you. Something has to, the money has to come from somewhere. And it's definitely not right. It's so anyway, Representative Edwards and McGaw did vote for this. De Palmer and Felag uh, voted for this. Am I correct on this? No Republicans yeah. voted for it. I wouldn't have voted for it. I don't think I don't think this is fair to any town or cities. And and they didn't even listen to the League of Cities and Towns as to why this shouldn't go forward. They just seem to be all up there doing their thing, whatever that is. Not sure. So um, it's very disappointing. I don't know what else we can do about it. They don't seem to be listening to us. Does anyone have any ideas? Mike. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, 
I obviously don't have any idea the, the rationale behind any votes on this or most other things um, this year because I haven't talked to anybody. However, we have one more shot. It's a long shot. The bill has been transmitted to the governor, but as of uh, what's listed today, he has not taken action on it. So we could certainly send correspondence to the governor asking for his veto of it. Okay. Um, that's probably the best next step is what I would recommend. And it's for A220 sub A. So how quickly would, does he have to act on it? Oh, or is it on 10, days, 10 days. He can let it pass without signing it, but he has 10 days to veto. Because I believe he's 10 days. Yeah. So we really don't have any really time to. Well, no, it's, it's 10 calendar. 10, day, 10 days from transmittal. 10, 10 days from transmittal. So then from did it, did it the transmittal to 24th. So if we get a letter, if the if the um, administrator gets a letter over to the governor by tomorrow, administrator, um, <laughs> the look he's giving you. <laughs> well, somebody, whoever. <laughs> we got to write the thing. Um, <laughs> well, I, I I think it's just copy the the, legal the yeah. Yeah, yeah, take legal the resolution. resolution. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much the and, resolution and, should yeah. do it right. Right, and ask him for a veto. I mean, honestly, I would also recommend um, that each of you call the governor's office. Yeah. And we can certainly set up an administrator, but it's also important that you weigh in. I think you're right, the League of Cities and Towns is against this bill. This is a little bit controversial because most of the cities and towns are against it. Um, so the more people they hear from, uh, the better. When did you say it was transmitted? The 20, 24th. 24th. Of June? Of June. Yeah. Yes. So and then it's 10 days. It's 10 days. I believe he said, is it looking that up right now? Is it yeah. 10 business days or 10 no, calendar? It's 10 calendar. It's 10 calendar. Excluding Sundays. So. Excluding Sunday. I believe so. Yeah. yeah, so basically, and holidays, and there were no holidays in between. So it's so probably July, well, maybe July 5th. July 4th? Uh, no, July 5th, 4th would be a holiday, so um, maybe the 5th, somewhere around in there. Yeah, I Just think that's when doing it. Doing it quick in my head. Um, but he can sign it before that, so mm -hmm. you don't want to wait. Um, so, sure. Donna, do you want to make that motion? Since you've been following this most closely? Yes, I would like to uh, oh, no, make. That's fine. I would like to make a motion that um, who, who's going to send it out? Um, Correctly. <laughs> directing <laughs> our <laughs> town administrator Chris to send out our resolution in opposition. And, of, and uh, can I suggest and a letter to the governor? And the letter to the governor, uh, requesting that he not sign. That he veto it. To, to veto. To veto. It. To veto um, the. A two two O substitute A. Oh, wrong one, right? Is that no, that's the right one. one. That's the right, right one. one. Okay. <laughs> I got so many numbers in front of me. I'm sorry. Two options. You can sign it or not. No, it'll come into law if, right. if he doesn't sign. He doesn't sign it. It becomes law. Yeah. So this is how a bill comes to an end. Yeah, he has to. Just a bill. Yeah. I know that. That's what that just reminded me of. Mike understands this stuff better than I do. It's all that civic stuff they need to reteach again because it's a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. All right. If that's a motion, I'll second it. Okay. It's the best I can do. It's, it's good, Donna. Uh, <laughs> I'll send okay. you a copy as soon as it's done. Motion's been made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Yeah. <laughs> Administrator Carter. Uh, discussion and possible vote to renew the contract with West Place Animal Sanctuary for one year. Chris. Oh, so our, our current contract uh, ends for West Place this year. Um, she's willing to renew it for another year. There is no other place in town to, to go. We did check in with the, um, and we have periodically with the, um, it's kind of, yeah. they, they are not at all ready, um, and they probably won't be for a couple of years if they're going to do it at all. So, and not that uh, uh, um, West Place has been, she's been fabulous as far as the service that they provide. I mean, uh, all we do is we take dogs there. We don't take anything else other than dogs. Um, because all I have is six cages. And she, she does a, a good job, and I would recommend that we continue it for another year. Who I, used to do this? I thought it was the kind of. It was, but they, they changed over to a corporate oh, okay. entity. All right, because when you just said that, I was like, I thought it was. The um, kind of and they have refused to take on. Well, um, we had problems 40. in the past with them. It's, it's a whole new entity now. And, so, and then 
I, I won't get into it because they okay. had other issues there that we it, it, dealing with. It, we're not allowed to go over state lines no. either. Yeah, yeah, that's another problem. That's, Why that's a, is that? I, I don't that's know. Like another it's country. Like it has something to do with the police transporting. I don't know. That's what it has to it, do with. What? Transport prisoners. <laughs> to, to Rhode Island. Huh? huh? They can't cross the line with the dog. I swear to God, that's it. I don't we don't know. extradite dogs, but that's it. <laughs> yeah. Subpoena? I remember this. I remember we were all laughing when the police chief brought it up. I know. It, 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 it has it, something to it, do. You can't transport a part of dog across state lines. It must have something to do with rabies or something. I don't know, but I remember that because it didn't make any sense to us because there's cheaper areas to do this in Massachusetts. There's one right on, right on our town line. That yes, we I know. Not that, you know, like you said, at the end of the day. It's our law. It's Rhode Island it's law. It's Rhode Island law, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, although it, it may be in every state. Yeah, he, he, well, he, would, he, he would agree. It has something to do. We can't bring them across state line. It sounds like they're criminals, too. <laughs> so, all right. So I'd like a motion um, to renew the contract with West Place Animals like Sanctuary them. for one year. So like, moved. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor? Thank you. Um, discussion possible vote to approve independent contract agreement with Thomas Lima for video service for planning board meetings. So the Rices who have been very good to the town as far as uh, recording live here the town, yeah, between the town council and the school committee. The trouble is the planning board meetings are on the night usually at the school committee mm -hmm. uh, and they uh, were gracious enough to help us find somebody who did the redistricting for the clerk's office uh, and he did actually come and do the last I don't know if it was the last planning board meeting or the one before that um, and his I don't think his contract is unreasonable I, I, I do agree that I think everybody would like to see the work of what the planning board is doing it's a vital function of town and people at home would like to be able to view what goes on there especially so I, I, right now, it, especially it, right now. Yep. does Rosemary want to weigh in on this while she's here yeah no comment, she said. I think it helps with the minutes, too. All right. Do you have a question? Any, any questions? Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion. Uh, I move that we approve the contact, the contractor agreement with Thomas Lima, Lima and the town of Tiverton for to perform video services and upload said videos different YouTube videos website related to the planning board meetings is this one year contract yes the contract for one year second motions remain second any further discussion all those in favor discussion and possible vote on proposed amendments of Tiverton Code of Ordinance chapter 14 regarding Stonebridge docks and to approve funds to advertise a public hearing as submitted by the Harbor Commission who is speaking on this? That was submitted by Bruce Cox uh, <coughs> from the Harbor Commission. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> That's why I was looking at you. Um, I didn't have an agenda in front of me, and I really couldn't hear you. But anyway, sorry. No. Okay, so discussion, possible vote, and proposed amendment. Regarding Stonebridge Jackson to approve funds to advertise a public hearing. Is there, so, a, is there an ordinance that they proposed? Right. So if you but the public hearing will be their public hearing? No, it will be our public our hearing. Our public hearing. So why do we have to approve funds to do that? That's how we always done it. Yeah, to, to advertise. Oh, 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 okay. All right. I get it now. It's usually to advertise. Right. Okay, all right. That's all it is. All right. So, They'll, I'm sure the Harbor Commission will come up and tell you why they want the ordinance at the public hearing. They've already did a little bit. Yeah, I probably didn't even need you up here, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice to see you, though. Well, um, whatever we need to do. Okay. So, I need a motion for permission to advertise for a public hearing. Uh, for the amendments to Tiverton Code of Ordinance Chapter 14 regarding Stonebridge Docks and to approve um, the funding for the advertisement. Do I have a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? 
all those in favor? Okay, so we'll have the public hearing. Joan has to advertise it for how long? 21 days. 21 days. <laughs> so it will be in August. No. No, it'll no, be at the end of July. The last one. Yeah. Um, the 25th. It would be August 9th. It would be August 9th. Yep. Oh, yeah, because you have to. Yeah. So this is for the new dock at Stonehenge. Yeah. yeah. So, if, so, so, so the they're not going to be able to use it until I mean, it's, after. Nope. It's really too bad. I mean, this is crazy. I know. <laughs> I mean, the charter requires. Yeah, I know. So, I, I don't really know the procedure, but can I just be filled in on what, when the earliest, if at all, would be used in season, or uh, provided everybody is, agrees? So I mean, if it's August eighth, we approve ninth. it. Ninth. ninth, we approve it. Then it can go forward. Is, uh, and then you're gonna have your and it's not I mean, August, the, right? Right. It's correct. not going to be done this summer, probably, because you have to have the lottery and everything, right? Or you could do. No, we can't. No, you really we can't. can't. Do anything before it passes. Yeah, you really can't do anything until we pass it. And it's really a shame. I agree with you. There's a lot. Just, I know. Everything's I, so slow. It's just, it's just no, it's ridiculous. It's a public process. I know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a public process. Yeah, it's, it's a public good. It's a public process. In, in, in respect, well, it's a Mike, public no good, but in, nobody in respect, can use it. I brought this on the agenda on February the 14th, Valentine's Day. I brought this topic. We met with the administrator, and now it's been sitting around for months and months. No, this has? Not this, this don't bring this Both. I brought both topics. Not, not the topic, the actual language. I, we were told, well, about a month or so ago that this was required by... But we didn't, we didn't budget for it until recently. Is budget for what? When, when did we... Ugh, you're all confusing me now. When did we make the decision to do this? It wasn't until like a month ago. May 23rd, was it? May 23rd. Yeah. So let me ask you one question. I'll ask Chris. With all this time we got until this is liable to happen, are we completely sure that we're insured? For the dock? No. Yes. No problem. Um, there's, there's no way around this. Nope. The charter requires it. Yeah, there's no way around it. Anytime you do an ordinance. But this ordinance was just recently brought to us. Two weeks ago. So we're insured for that dock? The dock is insured. Are people using it? Well, we're going to put the fire boat on it, correct? Hopefully yeah. they can Perfect. at least do that soon, at least to take advantage of the dock being yeah. there. We got the fire, yeah, yeah, we can do that, right? I thought you were going to do that, Craig, were you going to move it over there? Or? So we looked at the dock and uh, we want to be in the way of the Harbor Commission's use because they want to use the uh, west side well, for the boats. They want to our boat on the east side. We have to reconfigure the dock a little bit so we can tie up to it because of the poles. Oh, we can go on the west side for now, but we just we were waiting to make sure we were in their way with for the dinghies. So can they utilize the west side in the meantime until? Well, it doesn't sound like we're going to be able to use it the way we'd hoped until next year. So I mean, if it's just going to sit there, why don't we at least have somebody use it? And yep. uh, this is logical. That's the way it's written here. We can... What? And if you got it there soon enough, you could possibly get a credit from Standish, where the town might get back some money. <coughs> yep. So, I mean, right now it's just a, it's a crime that it's just sitting there, but anyway, that's the way it is. Government moves slow. Mm. No yeah, kidding. There's, nothing, there's no way around it. I'm sorry. If there was, Mike would tell me. There's no way around it. It's an ordinance. So, the next step is We're gonna the, have the advertise and have a hearing. Which will be August, August 9th. And then, and then hopefully, you can use we'll it. pass it August 9th. Yeah. And then, mm. then, that, then the next step is the lottery and who's going to use mm. it, right? Now, the public, now aren't you going to have a public sense? There's going to be a public section where two or three boats can. Well, on the east, on the west side, it would be a transient for anybody yes. who wants to tie up. Well, that could happen that's in gonna, August. Well, I mean, I've seen people tie up there right now. I mean, there was a boat there this weekend. There was a boat there this dock. afternoon. It's a dock. Yeah, it's a dock. can tie up now. Yeah. I mean, we are covered for that. We oh, yeah. probably should have signage up there saying, you know, something. I mean, I don't know what the legal. I mean, you can dock at your own risk, I guess. 
Well, I mean, I think the town should come up with what kind of signage just so we don't have a liability situation. You're I mean, have that's a liability whether there's a sign or not. It's our dock, right? So it's just the way it works. But signage helps. But it's, all right, we, we, if we have, it's our dock. We have a responsibility to keep it in good repair. Someone wrecks their boat against it. You know, that's their fault, not ours. But you know, it, it's a pro it's not it's property like anything else. We don't post signs on every, every property. Yeah, you're the lawyer. I just don't want to see the town get hit with something. But fine. It's insured. All right. Alrighty. Okay. You gotta get to the you gotta get to the paper Three first. But if I get it in tomorrow, I'll warrant it. Sometimes they make exceptions. We can't count on it. The latest is over. Okay. <clears throat> Joan, on the first page, there's a typo on the second line under Section 14, Initial Application. The Shell Bell awarded should be Shelby awarded. We can fix the type. We'll fix the type. We actually got to find some lot plot numbers before it's advertised too. So. Okay. So the next one is Mayan discussion possible vote regarding Grinnell's Beach and Nonquit Bridge areas related to fishing, drinking, litter, and other public nuisance. Since I've been on the council. <laughs> This has come up, um, but most recently, I got a lot of complaints two weekends ago that the place was a mess. That it was filled, that um, that Grinnell's Beach had litter. And there, it was just a wreck. So I drove down there myself. Um, against the bathhouse, there was two cases of empty beers. This was on a Sunday morning, so obviously there's a lot of drinking to be had over the weekend. Um, there was containers of takeout all along our nice area there. Then I walked down to the fishing area. There was two dogs running around. There's no dogs allowed. One defecated right in front of me. Owners just watched it happen. Um, there was drinking that I saw. Um, there was fishing, of course, which is okay. But there was just trash everywhere. I walked down along the beach, and of course, this trash has come down there now with, with the tide. I saw a couple of people walking that expressed to me, there's got to be something you can do. Um, a lot of work and effort went to make that beach what it is today, and I, I know this comes up all the time, but we need to do something. I talked to Chris about it. I wanted to know, because we've, talk, we've talked about limiting it to Rhode Island residents only. Um, but apparently we can't because it did, that is a DEM. DEM funded, which means you have to keep it open for everyone. Okay, so my question is, do we go to the DEM and say, okay, you're making us have this open, but this is out of control what goes on here. I also think the police need to be there more often. Definitely need to be there more often. Um, then during the week I went by there, the gates are supposed to be closed. They were not. I drove who right in. Who, 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 the, the police. police, police yes. Police. I drove right in there, and I'm going to be very honest with you. Same thing happened on Sunday that happened the other night. There was about 15 to 20 cars. Three were Rhode Island. <coughs> um, I saw people drinking on the beach once again. And this is at 9 o'clock at night. Police have to go down there. There's dogs roaming around the fishing areas. Um, and there's no dogs allowed. So our residents who do not like the idea. I don't think that, drinking's allowed either. No, of course it? not. Of course not. And our residents who were upset with the ordinance that they couldn't bring their dogs to the beach, we have all these dogs roaming about at 9, 10 o'clock at night. And this was Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock that these two dogs were running around. But then what was curious was I drove away from there and non quit bridge is getting out of control again. Um, first of all, you're only supposed to be fishing on one side. Yep, and also they're fishing on both sides again. Also, public drinking I saw there. As I'm driving up, there's people just like not even paying attention that no, I'm trying yeah, to get by. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's 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 a shame, and I feel bad for the people who drive home through non quit bridge every day because I went. By there again today, even today, there was, and they're fishing on both sides. 
And that's a safety issue because that's why we only made it on one side because kids were running back and forth. But the, the trash there is <coughs> just also. And it's all against that the fence for that yes, resident. And, it, and that place, that like parking area, is people like having picnics. lunch there and picnics there and grilling there and it's ridiculous. But I'm gonna tell you, Grinnell's was, I couldn't believe what I was looking at down there. But do so you I don't think know if, what we can do. But do you think if we limit it to just Rhode Island that we're gonna eliminate all the problems? Well, Rhode Island residents are not going down there and fishing. Because I go down there and I'm not seeing Rhode Island resident cars. Um, I, I've been going down now almost. Is that a right of way? Because they took the curbing out so that people could park there. Um, is it a right of way? That Nanticoke. people have the right to fish? The Nanticoke Bridge? They can fish. <coughs> right? Yeah, that's a CRMC right of way, that alleyway between Mr. Cameron's property and the bridge. So, but I think it's a safety issue when you have kids when I, I used Well, I used to see. I saw a foot race, all yes. teenagers running, having a race in the middle yeah. of the street last year because I walked that area. It's just a mess. I don't know what to Nan do about Nan it. Nanaquanket or the beach? Nanaquanket. Nan 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 they're not just fishing on the bridge. I was there. We've all been there now. Well, no, people are watching their children in the street. In the road with a cooler and hibachi. I guess they were doing their catch. And they just absolutely outright refuse to move. Yeah. So can't we at least have at the, least have the to chief stop them from doing anything but fishing? So he will. Um, I and they only fish on one side. They should. Limit well, they're supposed to, and I doubt we we will try to stop it. They'll be cited when they're not. But the chief's intention is to hire, I believe, it's three seasonal right. resource officers. He'll be doing that when he gets back. Um, Will they be there on weekends? They'll be at there nine, on weekends. 10 o'clock at night. That I don't know. See, but that's when it's all. That's when it all is. Yeah, it's not it'll during be beach time mostly. Right. It'll be mostly but beach. If you go by there at night, and a lot of times the gate's not closed. If you go by there at night, that's where you see them all. And the other day, I actually, the gate was closed, but I parked across the street and I walked down there. I couldn't. It, it's just a mess. There's no. Oh. There's no respect for what they're doing down there. And if the and dogs trash bags there. If the dogs are running loose, then the dog officer should be able to go yeah. pick the dogs up. Yep. But I, I'm not kidding you. I mean, of all, I was walking down and oh, no. there was dogs running all over. Uh, unleashed, of course. So he'll, I'll address it with him uh, tomorrow. I think he gets back Wednesday. Um, but that was his intent was to <coughs> between the animal control officer and the. the Seasonal resource officers to parole beaches that there will be some citations coming. But I really do think at night we should close those gates. So they do close them and they do evacuate the parking lot when they do get there. It's not always done at the right time because they're right, they're busy. But I do think that 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 area needs to be patrolled, especially on Friday and Saturday nights, because I'll tell you. I did. I did have a conversation with them about conversations that they have that it shouldn't always be on Eagleville Road. Or other places where they like to communicate, that that would be a prime a spot for them. Perfect place to, to hang around. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but do so we, he got the message well, loud and clear. That, well, and we want to make sure they're not leaving there and going down to Fogland. So they'll be they'll be well, the not, as, as well, but that's. I don't think they would though. That's further out. Sure, of course you can. So come up to the mic. Come on up, Everyone. I know you've heard me complain before, and I apologize. Well, I'm complaining. Thank you for uh, doing what you do. Um, so a couple of issues, because I've been kind of stuck. So this week, past weekend, I trespassed four people, two for defecating, uh, pooping in the yard, uh, two for throwing trash in um, uh, Mr. Bina's yard. Um, I think if the resource officers, the, the chief had mentioned that he might, they might be able to somehow help them with citations so a uniformed officer doesn't have to go down to the beach, if that's the case, I think that would relieve, if they were able to write trespass, if they were able to cite for drinking, if they were able to cite for nefarious behavior, I think that would help. Um, I also emailed the chief at the beginning of the week, last weekend, somebody threw a bunch of trash and unfortunately uh, their pay stub was in it. And- um, <laughs> well, That's not so, unfortunate. That's not uh, right. And it just, uh, ironically, they're a custodian that works for the city of Fall River School Department. So- uh, <laughs> What? I, so these are the things that, you, if, as you start doing your own little investigations, right? So, 
I, so some suggestion is extend the fire thing to grills the fire because right now what they're doing is they're piling the wood and throwing a grate on top of it and calling it a grill so if you got rid of the grills on the beach and the other thing you should do a diameter of a tent maybe a four foot umbrella or six foot umbrella instead of those eight by ten tents that are blowing down the beach especially at fog land that are fairly dangerous so i think if if because it's, it's making like a party atmosphere, right? So you have like, you know, they got the big hibachi out there, you know, it's, and it's, you know, it's, it's smelling like a fish fry throughout the whole place. And um, I think if we started with that, um, which is just simply kind of extending the no fire on the beach ordinance, just extend that to grills, um, and then limiting the size of the tents. Um, and then I tried outreach. I hired some, some of the guys that work for me are, are multicultural, so I, I hired them. I paid them 500 bucks last week to stay on the beach and talk to people and explain to them how it's disrespectful to, oh <laughs> to go to the bathroom in other people's yards, which kind of blew up in my face because I didn't realize the Mexican community doesn't like the Guatemalan community, which hates the Brazilian community, and it just turned into a really dicey subject. So. Um, oh my God! But you are right about the tents because there were tents. There were tents on. Grinnell's Beach. So those too. are pretty dangerous just as like wind blowing and liability because they don't always anchor them down. So every once in a while you'll see them just all of a sudden I'll be at my house and I'll see a, a tent just like <laughs> slam over and land in the water somewhere. So I think if we just kind of start with trying to adjust, maybe um, have the specials that are down there be able to write some of the citations and then um, limit the fires on the beach. And then the last thing, at least at Fogland Beach, it says on the sign, fishing designated only, areas only. There's no designated area. Oh, there is that. There is right. That. So at Fogland Beach, it says parking for whatever in designated areas. There's no designated areas for parking. Okay. So if we can start by doing designated areas, and I think those designated areas for fishing parking should be up by the security camera instead of down at the end of the beach where all the residents live. And that way the police department can more better patrol it with the cameras they have in place. Um, and um, During the day, that might be a problem though. Wherever they, so pushing them all down the end where they're interacting with everyone on the end of the point isn't necessarily, you know, like the answer because that's where like a lot of the rubs come with the with the use of the bathroom and the, and the, and the trash and the whatnot. So <laughs> if we could all try to work together on, um, I have my team putting a book together for you, some suggestions, but if we could, if we could come up with designated parking areas, and last but not least, I think 20 feet, 24 feet in off the road, there should be some stone bounds place so you can't drive on the beach. They're driving all over the dunes. They're, they're, they're mm -hmm. ruining the ecosystem everybody's trying to rebuild. If you go to the other end of the conservation area, they're parking in the low tide area. I mean, I'll, I can send all of your pictures. Uh, there was a car stuck in there on Sunday. I went down there the other day. So, I've been traveling around. So, um, I you know, that. I know everybody's working hard and everybody's trying to appreciate everyone's position and different walking positions of life, but it's, it's, it's escalating and it seems like it's getting out of control everywhere. So whatever you could do to help, I'm sure everyone See, the appreciate problems it. with the specials is they, they're only going to work during the day. And most So they said they were going to go to 10. split their shifts by yeah, so oh, I don't 10 think they're going to be there at 11 o'clock at night. That's what I'm saying. Right. They are. They, so, I, and I don't know, Ed uh, is good at communicating. So when Ed was communicating with me, he said that one special was going to come in from one time, and then the other one was going to take over till 10 o'clock. Oh, okay. Um, and then last but not least, I understand there's a pushback on the gate at Fogland. I get it. If we could try um, going back to maybe the beach is closed to only residents after a certain time, that would really cap off a lot of the problems there. I know it doesn't help you at Grinnell's. And yeah. I wasn't supposed to speak, so I'll leave it at that. No, and some I, I appreciate some of those. We do have a gate. I'm sorry. Right, no, that's okay. No, I appreciate some of those ideas. Some of them, because it's an ordinance, we're in the same pickle as we were with the voting issue just right. now. We'll have to advertise. You know, we'll have to draft it, advertise, and then. But I think the campfire thing could go over the grill. No fires on the beach would be a grill, right? Do you think that fits that into it? That would make it easy. No fires. Are no, no, fire. no. fire. Yes. That's yes. Is it? Yes. So I think. If, yeah. So I think okay. if we there's a there's 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 one thing to, you know, people come down to fish. The problem is, is they're bringing 42 people to watch them fish and they're grilling and they got tents going and <laughs> it's true. bands That's what and going down it, it's so yeah. so I think if we kind of take that party atmosphere out by making the party, you know, have your fish, fillet it if you want, take it home and cook it doesn't you know i don't have an issue with that i don't think anyone does it's the party atmosphere that's kind of you know rotating around it and then the lack of facilities that are open late at night for the people to use the bathroom is really 
is really a huge problem. I mean, I, I, I won't send you the pictures that I have. So it's like, no, thank you. you. <laughs> so there's, there's a few that are like, don't, even, don't if I'm going through my phone looking for something, I'm like, whoa. Um, so uh, those are my suggestions. Designate the parking. And you know, you have some good ideas about the drinking on the beach. I mean, but I think. There's no drinking the, allowed. So we got to go down there and say no drinking allowed. Fire, the fire and the grills promote the atmosphere. Right. So if we can start with, with that, which is already hopefully an ordinance that we don't have to redo and we can, you know, get some signage up that like that, then I think that um I think that'll that'll be a huge benefit for everyone. I don't think it's allowed in our ordinance anyway. No, it's well fires on but of course a grill is a fire. Well, well, it's, well, a couple of logs with a thing on top of it is a fire. Right. Well, that's no, but, but we didn't allow we didn't rings, right? No. So we were trying to do the rings. Um, I got the gentleman from uh, the, the beach Stu, 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 Stu. Stu. worked really hard on his thing, and even though we we disagreed on it, um, you know, I appreciate his effort. But you know, what's the difference between a ring a with no grill on it and a right. you know what I mean? Like, there's really no difference. So I I just I think um, I think there's some things that we can do to really, you know kind of nudge us in the right direction. And then um, I also think the sign should be um, multilingual um, mm. down the beach because we can't blame anyone that can't read English uh, yeah, for not understanding the world. So it's the world we live in now. Understand. So we have to communicate and make sure that they have the opportunity to follow the laws um, just like we do. All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks. And, and I agree with the signage, but you know we need to have oversight of that too because you, you can, the signs that say no alcohol, beverage, no blah, right, blah, right. no fishing on this side. And they don't And they're drinking it. and fishing on, the, uh, on that side. What it really needs, and it's... And because no one's coming to say... It, it's patrolling. And, well, no and one's coming to say... It says but, what you can't do. Right, but, but no one's... Right. It doesn't mean anything. Right. So it what doesn't we pertain need, to them. We need police to go down there and stop fighting these people. The word will get out and let's... And, and, that's the way it works. It's interesting when there's no one at the gate, like Saturday, there was no one at the gate at Fogland. I don't know if someone called in sick or they had a trouble scheduling someone. You could tell it turned into like a free for all, but you know, people must have been calling each other. Yeah. And it was like, and like just, you know, Massachusetts cars flying down mm -hmm. there. So, um, okay. All right, well, uh, can, um, can I just add to the, so I'm looking at their open burning. So, 4232 says no open burning shall be permitted in the town at any, any time except as set forth in the following sections. And the next section says recreational fires such as but not limited to campfires, charcoal grill fires, cook stoves, and open flame lanterns are allowed without a permit except from March 15th to May 15th between the hours of 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. But is that is that personal residence or is that no, it doesn't public? say. It's in no, because it, it says then say. it says shall not be construed to prohibit grills for personal use at a resident. Just change the dates from March 15th to February 28th. So, so, so we have a lot of problems with that ordinance uh, on the fire side, yeah. trying to enforce things because yeah. it's not clear at all. Um, we had an issue this weekend with open burning, and uh, Council yeah. Cook and I had talked about it and. Hopefully we can go through that audience and make some corrections be happy to, because there is nothing like open and closed burning. Um, it talks about permits, but it's only for burning leaves yeah. and well, it doesn't open burning. So I mean, that's, it doesn't allow you to have a, a chimney or a small or campfire in your yard. Yeah. So it, it's, it's very confusing and uh, causes would, a lot of problems. I was going to tell you that um, I did work um, about an hour on an ordinance uh, to it, it, it. There's not enough in there. So I did um, some background work and everything, and I was going to get in contact with yeah. you. Um, I said I wanted to work with him, too, to see what they wanted. We don't even have any definitions of things. And, I mean, it's saying a, uh, you know, a, a person, what did they call kind of a person, was it, that was supposed to be in charge of the fire? What did they call that? A uh, competent? A competent response. Well, they were all drinking. <laughs> Who's competent? <laughs> you know, I have a 10 to 12-foot flame beside my house, and I'm going, oh my God, my house is, no, it wasn't funny with the stuff that was going on. And I was like, oh, just let them have a good party. And then when they but started with the trucks, right with the, with the competency. I'm like, uh, and then the trucks, that they were like <coughs> egging each other on, and the trucks, I thought I was at a speedway. They're like, you know, revving up their, it was oh, the weekend, I'm weekend. like, oh my God. So I yell out the window, I go, this is so inappropriate. And they said something horrible. And I said, <laughs> that was inappropriate. Well, yeah, yeah, which well. was inappropriate. And um, 
I said, well, I'm going to call the police no, it, no. because it was so out of place. No, no. And so anyway, uh, they bring, bring the water truck down. They were throwing two by fours in into the into the flames. So I'm like, I'm like, wow, that's pretty. Wow, those flames are really yeah. high. And so I'm like, we, oh. we end up going to a lot of complaints, and what happens is somebody will take a hot dog or a marshmallow, <laughs> and they'll just say, well, <laughs> I'll have, we're barbecue. They'll, they'll have it right there, and they'll pick it up and just say, uh, yeah. I'm and cooking. And we get into the argument, so it's very, the way our audience is, is very tough to enforce. Craig and I have experience with this with our backyard neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although it does, it does at least. I, I think we're kind of like leaving yeah, a little, it does a little it, bit, yeah. It does at least limit it to between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., so we can at least enforce yeah. before and after that time for now. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, oh, after 5? Yeah, I, after, can't I, do it after 5. It has to be between 10 and 5. I'll, well. I'll, Except from March 15th to May 15th, between the hours of, this is poorly written. Yeah, yeah we, need to, we need to fix this. Yeah, so. All right, so anyway, that's what I, I wanted to bring it up because people are saying we're doing nothing about it. And I try to explain that we're it's, trying to. It's a but, difficult problem it's a very with, difficult the, with the public to right. thinking that right. things don't right. pertain right. to them. Um, so, so, Mike, do you want me to? Yeah, send me what I have so far. Yeah, what something we had done, and I'll have a conversation, maybe meeting here with the chief, acting chief, and we'll okay. maybe tweak it. Again, this is a process, right? So it's, it's yeah, here we go. Take us a couple weeks to do it, and then we gotta advertise it. No, I I know. I told him it's a long process, but I was right. willing to do it. We're almost done. I'll help you out. Yeah. One last one. Administrator kind of discussion and possible vote regarding authorization for a part-time administrative officer via contract. With Weston and Samson, Foxborough, Mass. Chris? So before Jennifer had left, she had reached out to as many people as she knew um, <laughs> that could handle the administrative officer um, position. And she gave me the name of an Ashley Sweet, who is uh, qualified to, uh, she's, she's a planner, um, but she works for Weston and Sampson. And they are actually an MPA vendor on the state MPA. Um, we would definitely need somebody in there uh, to deal with any of the administrative issues that come through, to make sure things are timed in properly. To, you know, to, 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 there's a role that definitely needs to be fulfilled until we can find a planner. We are advertising for a planner. And we, we are. are. The first six we're applicants are not at all qualified. We, a planner <laughs> like, is very, very difficult. It is. And it took us, I think, a year, a long time, one time to find a planner. All right, so uh, any questions? I, I will work with Mike to make sure the contract. I, I, we did get a sample of a contract to come over, I think, late Friday afternoon. It wasn't time enough to get for you yeah. for backup, but I will definitely work with the solicitor to make sure that we do it appropriately. All right, I'd like to entertain a motion. Um, I'll, mm -hmm. ma I'll make a motion to um, authorize Chris. Uh, to hire for a part-time administrative officer via contract with Weston Sampson, Foxborough, Mass. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Town Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Uh, just uh, important candidate deadlines. Make sure everybody is aware. Starting today, June 27th, uh, is there's a period of uh, for the candidates to file their declarations of candidacy. So today is the first day, tomorrow and Wednesday, so June 28th and 29th, and they have to be in by June 29th by 4 p.m. to the clerk's office. Okay, Mom. <laughs> so if you don't file your declaration of candidacy, you cannot get on the ballot. Uh, June 30th is the deadline for endorsements for, uh, to be filed for the local and state uh, candidates. Uh, July 1st is the deadline for endorsements to be filed for federal and statewide candidates. Uh, the nomination papers uh, will be available for pickup on July 6th and will need to be returned with the required number of cert signatures by July 15th by four in the clerk's office. You need 50. Okay. 
<laughs> Depending on the office, the number of signatures is different for town council, it's 50. All right, thank you, Joe. All right. Motion to adjourn. Stay dry. Do I have a second? Yeah. I don't think it's raining. Right. No, fine. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor?